I also now want to talk about the fact of when you're using resin modified glass ionomer, the cleanup is actually really easy. That's one of the wonders of, of using it and why so many people want to, to kind of fall back to doing that aspect of final cementation rather than, than uh, bonding, adhesively bonding them in. So I wanna talk about a few little tips and tricks that if you do have to use Unisim, what you can do to make placing or, or removing the cement a little bit easier. I'm, I'm one of these people that I'm very systematic in how I prep. I have a, a series of burrs that I use in the same line every time. Uh, when I design my restorations, I have a design sequence that I use, the same uh, uh, tools to design. And when I'm, when I'm placing my uh, cemented restorations in, I clean up my restorations pretty much the same way. So the first thing I do is I use a floss actually made by Johnson & Johnson it's called Total Care here, you can see it. And the reason that I love it is because it's, it's this rubber-based floss, so it does not kind of shear into tiny little threads, which end up getting a lot of times stuck in the patients in between their teeth, and you see them like picking at it with their tongue <clears throat> or driving their, they just drive themselves a little bit crazy. So I just like the fact that if this doesn't go through, it just tears and it's done. But the other thing I like it for is, I take a piece of articulating paper and I'll just fold it over the floss and I'll run it down the floss. Actually, my assistants, they do this for me and it's lied out on the tray just like this. So I have the uh, articulating paper, the, I have it, the ink basically on my floss ready to go. So you'll see a, um, an image of a, an Emacs crown that was done from one of my previous presentations that I did just because I had it in there. And you'll notice, I floss, when I floss through, it makes marks exactly where the restoration is binding, and I know exactly where to adjust. So if your zirconia crown comes out of the speed fire, and you go to try it in, and it's just a little bit too tight, don't arbitrarily just start taking off those marks and not knowing exactly where that contact is. Using a tip like this will make it very accurate in where it's getting held up and where you need to reduce. So that thing will, those restorations will drop and you're not gonna worry about possibly opening up your contact in another spot in within the, within the adjacent, you know, where how they're touching adjacently. The other thing I use a lot is uh, from Parkell. It's a, it's a separating medium called BlueSep. And, and I really like BlueSep because one of the issues that we have when we're bonding in these restorations is that the, the material not only goes uh, down into the gum tissue and things like that, but it comes up through the contact a lot and almost up over the marginal ridges. So next thing you know, you have your adhesive cement that is now stuck to both the adjacent tooth your, the interproximal of your restoration, and you just can't get a floss or anything through there. So I like to paint the, the restoration on the interproximal along the interproximal wall of the, the restoration I'm doing, and also the interproximal of that adjacent wall. So I would do it on, if this was, a, a say, number 30, I would do it on the distal wall of number 29, I'd do it on the mesial wall of 31, and then I would go ahead and I'd put it on the interproximals here. What that's going to do is it's a separating medium unlike something like Vaseline or KY or things that people use as a separating medium, it's got a color to it. And it's very, it's gel-like when it comes out. And then when you place it on, it almost gets tacky, so it doesn't run. So the big thing you wanna make sure, I don't wanna get my blue sep, which is a separating medium, underneath the margin, because then I'm gonna have a, a potential for a debond. I just want to place it in all aspects of that interproximal so when the cement comes in contact, it will just flick right off. And it makes cleanup so much easier for you. The other thing that I recommend highly using are by the Butler Gum Company, the soft picks. I don't know if you use these. Uh, we give them out to our hygiene patients all the time for patients who don't like to floss, which who doesn't like to floss? Everybody likes to floss, right? So in this case, for those that don't, those one or two people in your practice, we hand these out. But for us, I find that I use it the most for interproximal cement cleanup. I make sure I'll, I'll tack cure my, my cement. I'll clean off all the perimeter. I'll make sure that there's no unset cement on the underside. And I'm going to hold my restoration down very firmly. And I'm going to push my soft pick through the interproximal between the contact and the gum tissue. And those little kind of like Christmas tree branches that are on these things, they just grab cement and they push it right out of the lingual. So I'll tend to pack a cord 
and I'll leave a cord packed in when I seat the restoration down. And then I'll uh, put the blue step on the adjacent teeth and then I'll seat the restoration down uh, with the cement and I'll tack cure it. And then you'll see here, in this case, I took my finger off so I could take a picture without my thumb in it. But you'll see, my thumb was down and I started to push this through and you can see all of the cement that gets stuck within that soft pick. You see, I packed cord and why did I do that? Well, it's gonna stop your cement from getting subgingival. So all I do is I get through there, I tack cure it again for about five seconds just to make sure that the cement is nice and set, pull out my cord, put a little glycerin on the buccal and lingual walls of that restoration, and then go ahead and do your final cure. And then everything should come off really nice and you'll have these beautiful margins that will you know, avoid the oxygen inhibited layer. If for some reason you get something stuck in between, then you can use what uh, the contact ease. These things are wonderful. There's a lot of different companies that make these saws. They have the Sarah saw and things like that. I like these because my fingers fit nicely on there. You can you have a lot of control going back and forth, and they have ones with serrated edges like these. They also are great for like interproximal reduction, or if you have a little piece of cement adhered, you can kind of follow it like a C shape and get below and and remove any residual cement. So they're they're a wonderful. Uh, addition to your, your cleanup in your armamentarium. So with that, um, I hope that working through this gives you some ideas of how, why we want to use zirconia, uh, how to handle it in your practice, how to get it into the oven and get it out of the oven, uh, how to pre-polish and then do your final polishing, and then how to make sure that making the cleanup, which can be um, some of the most frustrating part of what we do, a little bit easier for you on your day-to-day -day practice. Uh, having the, the, the ability to do chair-side zirconia in my practice is something that's very, very wonderful for us. It allows us to use um, a really wide armamentarium in our practice that allows us to do chair side dentistry same day. And I gotta tell you, my patients love the chair side dentistry aspect of this much more than I do. So with that, I hope these tips and tricks help you back on Monday morning and I appreciate you taking the time to listen. Thank you very much.